Blair of the Mounties, a story of the Royal Northwest Mounted Police. We present the eighth episode in Blair of the Mounties. Inspector Blair is on leave in England. Our story opens at Barminster, the quiet old county seat of Western Hamptonshire in rural England. Below us, as we look from the windows of Ashley Cottage, we see the winding streets of the quaint old city sleeping in the haze of a summer day. Ashley Cottage is the home of Colonel Markham, chief of the county police. His wife, Peggy Markham, is the sister of Inspector Blair, who arrives today from Canada. Here you are, driver. Thank you kindly, sir. Hello, Peggy. Here we are. Hello, Jimmy <laughs> boy. Why, you look just the same as ever. Not a day older. Oh, same to you, Peggy, old thing. You look positively juvenile. Oh, oh flatter. Oh, Miss Old Peggy, I mean it. Oh, do come in, Jimmy, and let me have a good look at you. Where's Marco? Oh, he'll be here soon. Do sit down, Jimmy. I've got such loads of questions to <laughs> ask you. All right, give me time. You know, Peggy, I didn't realize I possessed such a handsome sister. Oh, you old humbug. Do sit down and behave yourself. How long have you got, Jimmy? Three whole months. How splendid. But where's your uniform? Now, Peggy, you're a colonel's wife and you expect me to come parading round in uniform when I'm on leave? I haven't even brought it. How ridiculous of you. I'm disappointed. <laughs> Too bad. Well, Peggy, it's wonderful to be in England again and the country looks gorgeous. But really, Jimmy, things are awfully bad in England. <laughs> it's going to the dogs, I suppose. I'm afraid so. <laughs> of course, always was. And I suppose it always will be. Good old England. She seems to thrive on misfortune. By the way... I forgot all about this husband of yours. How does he like police work? Oh, I don't know. It's rather a change from the army. He works very hard. Oh, I see. Here, Peggy, chief constable of a county in England is supposed to be a soft job, you know. Yes, I know, but Marco takes things seriously. There are lots of new angles in the police business, and you and he are such good friends. I want you to help oh, him. Oh, that's priceless, Peggy. A humble detective inspector advising the chief of a big county. Oh, but oh. darling, you've had a tremendous lot of experience, and you're making quite a name in Canada. Oh, I say, easy on, Peggy. You see, Jimmy, that's the side of the work that Marco needs help with. He's got a beast of a man under him, a superintendent named Cota, who's always trying to steal the spotlight. I see. Well, perhaps I can give Marco a lift. That will oblige, I'm sure. Oh, Jimmy, I knew you. Although, don't forget, I came over here on a holiday. Who oh, is he? Really? Ah, oh, fine, I can go right in. Oh, here's Marco. Hello there, Hello, Jimmy. Marco. <laughs> How's everything, old boy? Hello, <laughs> pretty tranquil. <laughs> nice to see you again, Jimmy. Yes, isn't it splendid? Now we'll have some lunch. I've got a bottle of real old Chateau Cam for the occasion. Fine. Come I, along. Fine. Come on. Uh, that's, all, that's all right. Let's go in here. Well, here you are, Jimmy. Thanks. Thanks, Marco. Well, here's happiness. The best of luck, Jimmy. Good luck, Jimmy. <laughs> you going back to the office, Marco? Yes, but I'm having a day off tomorrow. Uh, what do you say, Jimmy? Like to try the Hamilton Reaches for trout? Oh, splendid. Just what I've looked forward to for years. The Mayfly is rising. It's ideal weather. Ought to get some big ones in the spinny pools. Morning, Jimmy. How do you sleep? Oh, like a tub. I say, what a gorgeous morning. Yes. Now, good Lord, I wonder what that is. Marco. Yes, what is it, Peggy? It's the police car from headquarters. I think it's that awful man, Coulter. Oh, just my luck on a glorious morning like this. Good morning, Coulter. Anything wrong? Morning, sir. Yes, sir. Serious trouble at the all. It's Sir John Hamilton. He was shot and killed just before eight o'clock this morning, sir. What? Sir John Hamilton killed? What was it? Suicide? Uh, afraid not, sir. I sent Sergeant McLean out on it. He, he telephoned a few minutes ago. Says it looks like murder. Murder? Good heavens. Uh, any other information? Any arrest? Uh, don't know, sir. Uh, McLean couldn't talk on the telephone. Hmm, all right. Oh, uh, by the way, I have a guest I would like to take along. A guest? But that ain't uh, oddly regular, sir. That's all right. He's a policeman. Oh, uh, very well, sir. Well, let's be going. How far is it, Marco? Oh, a couple of miles yet. By George, there'll be a big stir over this. Hamilton was a big shot in the business world. Head of Associated Chemicals. Ah, you know him personally? No, he kept to himself a great deal. Peggy knew Lady Hamilton, a very fine woman. 
quite a figure in the sporting world. She used to be one of the best rifle shots in England. I say, you, you don't think that she, uh, uh, Lady Hamilton, I mean, was the one who... Oh, good uh, Lord, I hope not. By George, that would be too terrible. But we'll soon find out. Apparently, McLean knows who did it. There you are. There's Hamilton Park ahead. Yeah. You can see the hall chimneys through the trees. Joe, what a glorious place. Yes. Turn in, Parsons. Drive up to the front door. Hello, McLean. Morning, sir. Oh, Blair, this is Sergeant McLean. Uh, how are you, Sergeant? Inspector Blair from Canada, Sergeant. Brought him along to give us a hand. Well, sir, there's no need for any Sherlock Holmes in this job. It's as plain as the nose on your face. Well, Coulter, you'd better carry on. Uh, yes, sir. Hello, what's this? Uh, this is Morton, the hall butler. Anything I can do for you, sir? Yeah, uh, better come along. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's save the story, McLean. It was... Out here in the rose garden where Sir John was standing when he was shot. That window to the right of the porch is the breakfast room. Mm. The one on the left is the library. Well, what evidence have you got? The housemaid saw it from the breakfast room. Sir John was standing just here. He always waits for Lady Hamilton in the morning when she comes back from practicing. Uh, practicing what? Well, you see, Lady Hamilton has a private shooting gallery in the grounds. Goes there every morning for breakfast. All right, what else? Well, about 7.50 a.m., Lady Hamilton comes back from the shooting gallery. When she met Sir John, they had a quarrel. Lady Hamilton was carrying her rifle under her arm. The maid saw her suddenly turn away, and she heard the sound of a shot. Sir John staggered and fell, and that was all the maid saw. She didn't actually see Lady Hamilton fire the shot. No, but two people saw her shoot her husband. Now, who were they, McLean? Well, the butler Morton here and the housekeeper, Mrs. Bevan. All right. Uh, let's go in the house. Just a minute, Coulter. Huh? I'd like to know if Inspector Blair has any questions. Uh, just one, if you don't mind. No, no, go ahead. I'd uh, like to ask uh, Morton here something. Yes, sir. Did you ever see Lady Hamilton do any shooting before? Not likely, sir. She always locks the door of the shooting gallery when she's uh, practicing. All right, that's all. Well, sir, with all due respect to Sergeant Blair, I, I don't see uh, what he's got to do with this here, guys. All right, I'll tell you. I've chosen to ask him to assist us. Is that clear? Oh, very well, sir. Now, one more thing. McLean, uh, what was the position of Sir John's body when you found him? I don't know about that, Inspector. They'd moved him when I arrived. What? Before the police arrived? What do you mean? Well, uh, well, you see, sir, it was me as moved him. That's so, Martin? Yes, sir. I was the first to get to him. All right, what did you find? Sir John, he was lying just here with his head on the flower border. I thought at first he'd had a stroke or something and was still alive. So Millen, the footman and me, we, we carries him into the library. Yes, that was reasonable enough. But didn't you see any wound? Not till we got him inside, sir. Then we found a small wound at the back of his head. It was hardly bleeding at all. I see. Then what did you do? Well, I telephoned Dr. Rutherford, sir. He was here in a few minutes. By that time, we knew Sir John was dead. It's a terrible business, sir. But when did you telephone for the police? Well, as soon as the doctor came, sir, he told me to. And all that time you were with Sir John? Yes, sir. All right, that's all I wanted to know. Big pardon, gentlemen. Dr. Rutherford said he's ready for the police. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think we'd better go in. I expect they found the bullet. You go ahead, Coulter. I want to talk to Inspector Blair. Jimmy, this is a bad business. Yes, looks like it. I've got to ask McLean, but I wonder what they've done with Lady Hamilton. Yes, we must find out about that. It's rather a delicate business. Uh, Coulter didn't seem to be very happy having me in on this thing. No, but that's all right. Coulter's a good policeman, but... This is his first murder case in years. Naturally, he wants all the credit he can get. Oh, yes, that's natural. Hmm. Personally, I'm thankful you're here. Cold is rather bullheaded, and we've got to be careful. Hello? What is it? Found something? Yes. It's this little metal screw or cap. It was lying in the flower body. wonder what it is. Let's see it. Hmm. Screw cap of some sort. Milled on the outer edge, with a hole through the center. It must be off some garden implement. Better turn it over to the... Hold bottom. on, Marco. You know, I've seen a cap like this before somewhere. I'd like to identify it just for fun. If you don't mind, we won't mention it for the present. All right. You don't think it's a clue, do you? No, no, I wouldn't say that. Still, sometimes it's the little things that count. All right. Let's go in and see what the doctors have got. Well, Coulter, did you get the doctor's report? Uh, yes, sir. He's the bullet. Hmm, I see. Small lead bullet... Pretty badly broken up. Mm, yes, sir. But the way it corresponds to the bullet Lady Hamilton used in her rifle, it's the same caliber. I see. 
Tell me, McLean, where is Lady Hamilton? Well, sir, she collapsed when this thing happened. She's in Dr. Rutherford's care. I was going to question her, but the doctor interfered. Said he'd be responsible. Ah, good man, that doctor. Well, that's all right, but we have to take her in charge. Hold on, Coulter. One thing at a time. How about the doctor's report? Well, there's not much to it, but it's plain enough. The bullet was lodged against her frontal bone was the cause of death. How about the gun? Well, here it is. It's a twenty-two caliber target gun. Plenty of fingerprints, all made by the same person. Of course, the Lady Amitons. I see. Any questions, Blair? No, seems pretty straightforward. Can I look at that gun? Certainly. Thanks. Uh, Morton, you saw Lady Hamilton fire at her husband. Yes, sir. I was a standing... Never mind where you were. Which shoulder did she fire from? Why, the, the right shoulder, sir. You sure of that? Positive, sir. All right. Go ahead, Coulter. Well, gentlemen, we have the evidence of two people who saw Lady Hamilton fire the shot. The maid and the footman saw Sir John fall. This is the rifle that done it. And the bullet fits the rifle. What more do you want? Yes, and the motive, Coulter? Motive? Why, bless my soul. <laughs> Ain't the motive enough? What I says is that this here Lady Hamilton is guilty of murder. I say she ought to be charged. <laughs> She's no more right to consideration than anybody else, lady or no lady. I'm afraid you're right, Coulter. And I'm sure Inspector Blair agrees. Of course he does. What else could he do? Well, really, Coulter, I don't want to be awkward, but I'm afraid you'd have a bad time on a witness stand with a smart defense lawyer. What? Uh, uh, how do you make that out? Really, I, I can't see your point, Jimmy. Well, perhaps I can explain. But first, let me say this. That butler just now was lying. What? Why? How do you know? Because it was utterly impossible for Lady Hamilton to have killed her husband. You have heard episode eight, the first part of the Hamilton mystery. The second part of this story will be presented in episode nine of the dramatic series entitled Blair of the Mounties. <laughs>